Hello there friends and welcome, for today's BG3 guide we have a very fun build that's all about the ever so classic magic missile spell. And just like a true wizard with a gun, you'll be able to blast enemies into complete submission by spamming loads and loads of extremely damaging magic missiles, as we'll be stacking every single source of extra damage possible to our powerful magic bullets that even enemies up to 90 hit points or so can be deleted outright with just the normal level 1 variant of the spell, and even 300 plus damage when truly really maxed out, for one shots even on Tactician. And of course, like with all of my builds, I'll give you ways of making it work even decently early. Lastly, don't forget you'll still be a full spellcaster, that is, you'll retain access to all sorts of other powerful spells including buffing, crowd control, debuffing and so on. So without further ado, let us get into our Magic Missile Wizard with a Gun build, first with character creation. When it comes to race, it honestly doesn't matter much for this type of character. After all, your Magic Missile doesn't require a roll to hit or a saving throw, it always hits for full damage. Which is why I'd rather focus on races that offer utilities such as the classic Wood Elf, especially the Wood Half Elf because of more bonuses just for the classic higher movement speed, which can help any type of character, but it's not necessary as I said before. Githyanki can also provide a lot of nice utility, such as proficiency in multiple skills, and even lots of gear types like medium and light armor, short sword, long sword and great sword, but you won't exactly be attacking with this build. Or just the classic halfling not to fail on a 1, especially for ability checks and saving throws. But like I said, pick whatever you want, I'll be going with human because I like them the most. And when it comes to class, while later your character will absolutely want to be a wizard, this is only rather late, because at level 10, the Evoker Specialist Wizard gets an extremely powerful ability that will enhance your magic missile damage to the max, called Empowered Evocation, which lets you apply your entire intelligence modifier plus 5 later, to all spell damage, and of course, because magic missile hits multiple times, we have a plus 5 being spammed again and again. It even applies to other sources, it's not just spell damage anyways. But here's the thing, this benefit only comes online at level 10, which is, well, what, 80 hours, 100 hours in the game even, depending on how fast you're playing? I cannot advocate for you to play a wizard for something you only get at Act 3. Which is why I'd much rather begin as a sorcerer, because I find the benefits should be better earlier. Not just early, but for the entirety of Act 1 and the second act as well. Later, once you hit level 10, simply respec into a wizard to get all of the nice bonuses at once, without delay. For your subclass, I'd rather go with the Dragon Blood line, because I find the benefits should be better earlier. We have both higher hit points and armor class from the Chronic Resilience. You can also go with Storm Sorcery if you want to fly after casting a magic missile, but I'd rather Dragon Bloodline. For the Dragon Ancestor, any that focus on fire damage, because this way, if you ever run out of magic missiles or you want to save them, you can always rely on a very powerful heavy hitting fire bolt for extra damage. My preferred choice is Brass, because you get the sleep spell for free, the best crowd control very early game. Yes, this will get out class later, but later you'll have other spell options anyways. And for spells and cantrips, please remember that I already have a best spells guide, you can check to the side here, where I cover everything here, all the choices in depth. So let's keep it short and simple, Blade Ward for extra defenses, Light for utility, Firebolt for extra damage. As far as spells, well, Magic Missile of course, it is after all the entire point of this build, and the good thing is, because it's a level 1 spell, you can upcast it as any spell of higher level, which means you essentially can have your entire spell book and all your spells lost be magic missile, quite fun. And of course, when you upcast it, each increasing spell level will provide an extra missile fired, for higher damage, both single target and area of effect, because you can either apply all missiles on the same enemy or split it between multiple targets. For the second spell, I'd go with shield just for extra defenses if needed. For your stats, charisma is of course our main stat, assign a plus 2 and start with 17. The best part about starting with high charisma is that this character won't just be about damage, because of course, 
you'll get to combine multiple of the best dialogue skills such as Intimidation, Persuasion and Deception for a party face, which is great when it comes to your main character. Anyways, Dexterity is your second most important stat, so start with a 16 for high initiative and decent enough armor class. Yes, initiative matters a lot with this build, after all, don't you want to be the fastest magic missile gunner in the west? The sooner you can act, the sooner you delete everything with magic missile before they can react instead. And of course, this character is still a full caster, so you can also act first for let's say buffing or crowd control. Besides that, the classic 14 constitution, because of all the chronic resilience, for most of the game it will be as if you started with 16 anyways, for higher hit points. And let's say higher wisdom, so you won't get crowd controlled, although you always act before the enemies anyways. For your skills, as I said before, you want to focus on the dialogue ones. Let's say, start with both persuasion and intimidation, and go for a background that enhances the remaining skills you want, such as criminal for deception and also stealth, urging for a sleight of hand and stealth, after all we have decent dexterity to unlock chests and disarm traps if you need, or anything else you want. And of course, if you go with the Githyanki race, you can always choose to enhance another set of skills, such as all of the wisdom ones like insight and perception for even higher power when it comes to skill checks. And that's it for level 1. For the second level onwards you want to mostly remain a full sorcerer until level 10. At first I thought about multiclassing with warlock for the hex spell but it doesn't really work with magic missile although your physical attacks can still proc the extra damage. But what we want is magic missile spamage anyways. So why bother unless you wanted to specialize in Eldritch Blast instead, but that's another build. For more spells, go with Shield or Fog Cloud depending on what you picked before at level 1. Fog Cloud can always help for crowd control as it doesn't really require a saving throw. And this character will have the concentration slot free, unless you're spamming haste later on. For our first meta magic abilities, the ones we really want only come at the next level, but for now, Twin Spell is the best choice. Most importantly, so you can dual cast your Firebolt Cantrip to hit the same enemy twice, or even multiple enemies, which can help you save magic missile slots. By virtue of being a Red Dragon Bloodline Sorcerer, we'll get quite decent damage with our Firebolts. The second meta magic is up to you, you might as well pick Distance Spell, but it doesn't really matter. For level 3, Cloud of Daggers is the best pick, as an amazing source of area of effect damage early. And at last we can pick Quicken Spell, the best meta magic for our build. This way you get to cast another instance of magic missile as a bonus action. And of course the more casts, the more missiles you are spamming at the enemy with added damage. For level 4, any cantrip you want, might as well pick friends. And then the Scorching Ray spell can be quite powerful when it comes to single target damage. Or you know, just rely on your magic missiles for that might as well grab Misty Step for a nice teleportation ability. Our first feat is very important and we absolutely want Alert for the maximum initiative possible which ensures our character will always, 100% of the time, act before enemies, even bosses. After all, you don't really need higher charisma with let's say ability improvements, since your magic missile does full damage regardless of the enemy's saving, it doesn't offer a save at all. The faster you can act with your trigger happy, Gun Wizard, the faster you delete all enemies, or most of them early on. Something else you can do at this point is pick dual wielder, so you get to dual wield staffs, I'd rather pick this way later, but it's up to you. Even early you have some staffs with powerful benefits. For level 5, well you might as well pick haste, which is the ultimate buff, especially since we already have the twin spell meta magic to apply it on double targets, ideally yourself for more magic missiles and an ally of choice. It's definitely the best choice for our build's concentration slot. For level 6, grab Counterspell, because it can really help block enemies on spells as a reaction. And for level 7, honestly, from this point onwards is anything you want, because you'll just be spamming your magic missiles anyways, or let's say haste, but you can always go for crowd control effects like hypnotic pattern or slow. Even grab them earlier if you prefer. You are still a full caster after all. And for your feat at level 8, well, you can grab Dual Wielder now, if you didn't pick it before, or increase your Charisma by plus 2, it's just that you'll soon be respecting into a full wizard anyways. Any other spells at level 9, as I said before, they all pale in comparison to Magic Missile Spamage, 
and level 10 is when you'll be respecting as a wizard anyways, so let's get into that now. Don't forget to start with 17 intelligence instead of charisma, grab the evocation school at the second level, the alert feat at level 4, as a wizard you can also get access to summon spells unlike sorcerers such as animate dead at level 3, and conjure minor elemental as a level 4 spell, then at level 8 in preparation for our intelligence modifier bonus to spell damage we get at level 10, grab ability improvement and 2 points into intelligence. It will already be a 20 by now if you went with the power up from a certain boss during Act 1. And there we are, Empowered Invocation right at level 10. And any spells as well, because at this point you'll just be spamming Magic Missile or the unique Artistry of War improved variant that you can get at Act 3. For the last remaining levels, well, I just keep our character as a pure wizard. For maximum spell slots, after all, there's not much to be gained from, let's say, multiclassing into Sorcerer or Warlock at this point. At least as a pure wizard, we'll get an extra feat at level 12. And speaking about our feat, well, you have a few different options, but something fun is dual wielder to dual wield staffs, and you can of course pick this earlier, even as it is level 4 if you prefer. Something like Spell Sniper doesn't matter for Magic Missile because it doesn't roll to hit, therefore it cannot critical, plus I'm pretty sure it's still bugged. And as always you can increase another ability like for example Dexterity. Dual Wielder is definitely the most fun option I believe. Alright, now let us get into gear for our Magic Missile focused caster. For the helmet, early you can just go with the Lifebringer so that whenever you get lightning charges, you'll also acquire a minor amount of temporary hit points. And with this build, it's very easy to generate many lightning charges. And for the second deck, there's always the classic Fistbreaker Helm for higher initiative and DC, and the Hood of the Weave later on for the maximum bonus to DC. Yes, Magic Missile doesn't care about DC, but it can still help with a lot of your other spells, especially crowd control ones, unless you just wanna be a Magic Missile boss, that is. For cloaks, there's nothing important until the Cloak of the Weave at Act 3, unfortunately, for higher DC. For armor, early be sure to go with the proc that is Sparks Wall, later you can upgrade it to the armor of Landfall. Or amusingly enough, even the best heavy armor in the game, the Hell Dusk armor, because it doesn't require heavy armor proficiency at all, which means you can still cast spells while equipped with it. And you can of course also use the Potent Robe while you're still a sorcerer during the second act. For gloves, Spell Might is definitely the best pick here, it might be bugged because currently it works with magic missile for extra damage, a lot of it by the way, because of how many missiles we fire. Despite the fact magic missile doesn't exactly require an attack roll, but anyways. Earlier just go with the classic gloves of missile snaring to prevent range damage. The boot slot doesn't really matter, I have arcane bolster in here, but go with whatever you want. Or you know, just a classic boots that grant you misty step for free. For Amulet, definitely the Psychic Spark for once, because this is by far the best slot for any Magic Missile build. After all, it provides not only an additional dart of Magic Missile fired for all your Magic Missile variants, so even the level 1, which by default only fires 3, will now fire 4, and so on. And it even provides an extra cast of Magic Missile for the level 1 variant. For Rings, the Kalos Glow Ring is definitely a must-have, because it's one of the very rare sources of extra damage that also applies to spells, it's not just weapons. And with this, it's an extra plus 2 radiant points of damage on every single individual instance of magic missile fire. Trust me, it really adds up. The enemy has to be illuminated, but that's super simple, I mean, just have your tank with the light spell on. Lastly, the Ring of Absolute Force, because it has pretty nice synergy with a weapon I'll soon cover as this will enhance our thunder damage by plus one. Speaking about weapons, let's get into them. Spell Sparkler is a must-have, it's found super early at Act 1, and will provide you with loads and loads and loads of lightning charges, which of course grant you more damage, because, because you get to generate multiple lightning charges on every single magic missile hit, and once you get enough, it will explode dealing damage to enemies. As I said, you'll just be constantly generating them, even at the early levels. You can dual wield staffs with this build as early as level 4. Ultimately, of course, you want the legendary staff, Marco Hashkir, which lets you cast one spell of any level for free per long rest, and most importantly for the Karaska's Favor ability. And ideally, you wanna go with Bolts of Doom to enhance your lightning charge damage and get even more lightning charges. 
I tested with a lot of the other ones, but they weren't really that good. Unless you want to debuff enemies, for example, with the poison debuff on hit. Another very interesting choice that's Act 1, even much earlier than the Legendary Staff to dual wield with Spell Sparkler, is Nature Snare. Because of its very unique Fly Trap ability, whenever you hit the enemy, including with a spell, including multiple times for each cast of Magic Missile, you'll have a chance to ensnare them on a difficulty class of 12. It's not the highest, but look, you're hitting the enemy so many times with this, even area of effect, because you can split your magic missiles, that a lot of them will fail. And ensnaring is amazing to prevent enemy movement and generating advantage on all attack rolls against the creature, perfect for, you know, empowering your own allies. While this advantage of dexterity saves is amazing for spellcasters. There's yet another weapon to cover that is one of the most important pillars of this build, if you want the highest damage possible. The unique long sword Faller Aluve also found at Act 1, because of its extremely useful melody ability. When you choose the Shriek variant, enemies around the character that has the sword will take an additional 1 to 4 thunder damage per strike, including each individual instance of magic missile fired. Which is why it's so powerful, right? Because you're adding loads and loads of extra damage per cast. This can even be enhanced by your Empowered Evocation benefit as a level 10 wizard later on, it's just crazy. And it is once per short rest, so while you cannot spam it every battle, it's still 3 battles per long rest. Perfect for the tough battles and also boss ones. The thing is, because the aura is rather close to the character that has the sword, I'd much rather someone else equip this instead, like Shadowheart, my tank here, who will be close enough to the enemies. Lastly for ranged weapons, just the Nether Emisser, because it has synergy with a Magic Missile build. After all, it provides more casts of Magic Missile, this time as a level 3 upcast variant, once per short rest. So you have 4 free Magic Missiles, 3 from Nether Emisser, and another from the Psychic Spark. Plus all of your spell slots, of course, and your Arcane Recovery, Extra Charges, or Sorcery Points. And don't forget, as a consumable, the Elixir of Bloodlust is the best to generate more actions, which means more magic missile spamage. Frankly, I really tried squeezing out every single boost of extra spell damage possible for this build, but if you know something I don't, please be sure to comment down below. And well, this was it for the actual build. As always, if you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.